Baby's growing. I am 21 weeks. Nicole and I are so dependent on the seasons and as fall transitions into winter, we're still getting quite the harvest from our garden. Our carrots this year were our best crop yet and we're turning them into soups and juices using our Kemikoto knives and sharpening whetstone. Our Kemikoto Kanpeki knife set includes three knives, a seven inch Nakiri vegetable knife, an eight and a half inch slicing knife, and a five inch utility knife. Each Kemikoto knife is made with Japanese Honshu steel 
Each knife is individually inspected and goes through a 19-step process and is used by Michelin-starred chefs all over the world. There's also a lifetime guarantee, and the Ashwood box it comes in makes a fantastic gift. Since Nicole and I love our knives to be razor sharp, we also receive the Toishi Whetstone, which has a 1000 and 3000 grit side for getting that traditional and high quality edge on your knives. Please check out the link in our video description for a nice discount if you would like to check out and order the same knives and whetstone we're using. Hey, how is ginseng? It's good. Nice and comfy. Hard fire. Here's some beta carotene and anthocyanins for our baby. I'm sorry if nobody can hear what you're saying because it's raining outside. And <laughs> it's so loud. Wow, this is really good. That's orange, yellow, purple, and yellow, purple and orange, and black carrot juice. You realize that as you drank that, the fire exploded behind you. Oh, really? I could feel it on my back. That was good. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. He's bigger than Puma and Kai. At least the same size, but he's huge. Hey. Okay. Why is it that every fall around here we kind of like live with the seasons? We do some sort of significant project every fall. Last year, pizza oven. I don't know. And this year, you get it, babe. And this year, we got the smoker behind us. Is like every fall going to be a new, like, exciting project? Sure. If we want it to be. How many other ladies are five months pregnant chopping wood <laughs> in the remote Canadian rainforest? I don't know. <laughs> you are. Do you like the smoker? I love it. I think it turned out really good. That salmon that we got out of it was next level. We've never been able to go out and just do a full harvest of fish or herbs or mushrooms, whatever, because we've had nowhere to put it. Yeah. So we kind of just always go out and forage 
for that day or that week. Now we can put away stuff for months. Yeah. It's ancient uh, human refrigerator. That's great. It is. And honestly, my whole life, um, smoked salmon, you know, it's something you always buy from the store. It's really nice, but this is uh, really empowering because we know how to create ourselves now for free using just the wood we have a plethora of and the salmon which just takes our labor going out and catching them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do like Captain America and just pull that apart. Alright guys, so let us know if you uh, enjoy our projects. Let us know what you're working on. Hopefully things like this inspire you guys to get out there and put your muscle and your time toward projects that free you. Um, I think this is very freeing. You know, it's a fun project. We did it together as a couple. It's good couples therapy. But at the end of the day, it also allows us to preserve food in an old school healthy way. I'm very much a proponent of preserving food the old ways that humans did for thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of years before electricity was discovered. So I think this kind of stuff, the pizza oven, using fire, using the char, using the smoke is the way to go for true optimal longevity and health. And it's fun. Yeah. Give me some. A nice wood pile drying out in the sun there. I know. It's a good feeling when the sun hits it. Supercharge. Come on, home. I just kind of toss them to you? That'd be awesome. Okay, but let me um, get this kind of out of here really quick.
So I want to talk about um, a little trick that I learned for keeping the moisture down in the yurt. Because um, as you guys know, we live in the rainforest and things get very wet, very moist um, to where it starts to get moldy or mildewy. Um, so I learned this technique a couple years ago by watching somebody else. And so I've been doing it for the last three years and it's worked pretty well. So I wanted to share it with you guys really quick. Obviously we have the wood stove to keep the moisture down and to keep it dry. Um, but sometimes, you know, we don't always have it going, especially during the summer and it still is very, you know, wet and moist here. <laughs> and then also, you know, the wood stove heats up pretty well, but we don't have it going at night. And sometimes the heat doesn't reach to the opposite end of the yurt or underneath like the cupboards, like on the baseboards. So anyway, so Jake and I order a couple bags of the calcium chloride, which helps melt snow and ice so you don't slip. So I take the calcium chloride, it looks like this, and I'll just put it in some like baking sheets, not baking sheets, baking pans, <laughs> like a bread loaf pan like this. And then I strategically place them throughout the yurt, which I'll go in and show you kind of where I put them. And then in about two weeks, I mean, it kind of depends on the moisture level and which area of the yurt or in the bunkie. When I come back to this, which I'll show you guys in about two weeks, when I come back to this, it'll just be full of water. Um, it'll be kind of like a goopy mess of water and I empty these out and then refill them. So it's helping collect the moisture instead of going into our clothes, making them smell mildewy, um, instead of going into our floorboards or going into our cupboards. So I have a bunch of them. I'm gonna fill them up and then I'll put them throughout the year. So I just take this and I just slide it under there, just like that. Boom. Put about six trays in the yurt and about four in the bunkie. Uh, the bunkie, I'll put them underneath our bed, uh, underneath our closet, and stuff like that. All right, so I wanted to give you guys a bump update because the last video I didn't. Um, so here we are. Baby's growing. I am 21 weeks. And yeah, there it is. I don't know if you can tell with my horrible lighting. <laughs> but... Yeah, I got these cute maternity overalls that will expand as I get bigger in the belly area. Oh, I guess that's a good view right there. So yeah, 21 weeks, over halfway now, just a little bit over halfway, and yeah. I'm just getting more and more excited. Hey, seasons are changing. Yes, it's getting cold. Can you feel it? Yes. And we have uh, a new family member on the way. What? Yeah. So we're coming up on almost six months being pregnant, and today you figured out your baby is the size of a... Grapefruit, a which grapefruit. is pretty big <laughs> to think about it. We're able to feel the baby kicking and moving, you know, all throughout the day, and... I'm very active. Uh, yeah. And what is your mama sense feeling like, boy or girl, or what? I'm feeling girl, but, I mean... Who knows? It's a 50-50 chance. I mean, I'm not going to be like, oh, I swear it's a girl. I swear it's a girl, but I don't know. I am having dreams it's a girl. You I have a feeling it's a girl, but who knows? I don't know. You've been having dreams about what? That I, you know, I'm delivering a baby girl and that... That you were delivering a baby girl? Yeah. I've had Whoa. A dream. And then I had a dream that I had a little girl sitting in my lap. She's probably like three or four, um, but she kept calling me mom and like I had a feeling it was my daughter. Mm. Um, and she had like super blonde hair. She was really pretty. I'll be happy either way because I would love a sweet little baby boy. And I'd love a little sweet little girl. So either way, I'm happy. Well, out here at Como Rebbe, we have almost 20 acres and we're actually only living and gardening and kind of existing on about two of those 20. And we're kind of letting the forest just be in its beautiful natural state on the other parts of the property. But here we have the yurt and the bunkie cabin. And the bunkie cabin has become our de facto bedroom. And the yurt is, what would you say, the entertainment kitchen? The living quarters. Yeah. So we are starting to have people travel again. And the whole time people have been asking us, has COVID affected us? And yes, it's affected our travel. It's affected our family and friends' travel. So now that family and friends can start to travel, um, we're hosting family and friends. And we also have a third member of our family on the way. So we need a second living space for not only a uh, baby nursery, but then a studio for all your holistic herbs and projects and things like that. Plus, it'll be a guest room if friends come over because... It has a loft. 
I'm really excited about this bunkie. Um, it's by the same company, Sawmill Structures. Um, this model is the Hillcrest model single door. So we just have one door with two very beautiful windows on the side and a loft. And I'm really excited about this bunkie. Um, one, because it's gonna be kind of my studio where I'll be able to create my dyes and teas and herbs and stuff, but also a baby nursery and like Jake said, um, kind of a, like a cabin for guests that come and stuff. So they have their own separate space, but I'm really excited. <laughs> Folks can follow us along if you go to Sawmill Structures website and look up Hillcrest Loft SD. We should have this up in just two episodes. So stick with us, it's gonna happen real quick. And we wanna show you guys part one of the build today, which is the foundation and the bunky going right up. I'm really pleased with yurt life and bunky life because if you're looking to get out of debt and out of the mortgage trap, um, find an affordable piece of land and put a very affordable bunkie or yurt on it and you got a, a no debt living quarters ready to go. Yeah. Well, enough talking about it. Let's build it. Let's do it. Do I ever get to just stop building and enjoy my No, life? no, never. What about my studio? I just want a big 2,000 square foot Zen Chinese martial nice. arts studio Let's that go. Mr. Miyagi would be jealous of. So three things at once. I'm building a garden shed, mushroom grow room, and frame for our solar panels. Yes. And the second bunkie is gonna go here. So my only question for you is like, how close to the hippie hot tub do you want it? Cause like, if it is of that level, then it's it's good because it, it's taller than this. Mm -hmm. And then there could be a pathway that connects to this and it could be one big thing. This is, this is actually great. You just gotta get the wood chipper up here and then we'll chip a beautiful pathway so that everywhere you want a pathway to be, we have wood chips to lead the way. Okay, hold on, let me think about this. So, I mean, it's kind of cool to have different shapes versus just like facing this way, facing this way, facing this way. Yeah, I guess we could do that. We'll do it at an angle versus like, just like, like the front door being here, you know? We'll angle it. We'll, uh, we'll see what we can do here. They're so wet, they're so easy to, to draw. Yeah, I'm gonna take this too and die with them. You are. I like your hot back. <laughs> it's very cute. I patented that move. <laughs> the Jake hot back. <laughs> very nice.
right from the center. Good. Is it heavy, darling? Not really. Okay, up toward you. Hi. Okay, I'll do them one at a time here. Pregnant, I'm only gonna make you spread gravel for six hours today. How do you like that? One down and a lot more to go. You got that? Oh nice. the level we can level them up there. It fits. This is how it's gonna be. It's gonna be like an art deco, like that side's higher, this side's lower. I'll go get the level. <laughs> okay. When can we take a year off and just enjoy what we're doing? And I can just fish and forage and garden for a year and that's it. When? It's one down.
Load up. The balance king. Look at Kai. He's, He's so afraid. Come on, load up. Let's go. Come on. Load up. Load up. Come on, come on, load up. Yes. There you go, Kai. I got it. Come here, Kai. He's so nervous. Hi, Puma. Good job, Puma. Come on, let's go. All right. On this side. Good morning, guys. It's freezing outside. It's zero Celsius. Well, when we woke up, it was zero. It's probably a little bit warmer now, but it's freaking cold. This bunkie is really um, tall. The deck has a lot of space. Yeah. Really like nice. for underneath storage. Yeah. So we're just going to finish it up. I'm pretty sure we'll get it done today. Let's do it today. Let's get it done. The problem you're get the roof is on. It's getting dark sooner and <clears throat> it's freezing. So we're getting a late start. I know. So we're going to get, get it done today. Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> There's three of us. Jonathan's on his way over. So we're going to put it up. It's like Lincoln logs. You, you know, <laughs> put it together. So we just got to get that roof on there um, before the rain and that's it. So let's see. Because it. your baby is due tomorrow. We got to have this nursery done. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but this is also going to be a um, a guest room for, we have some family and friends coming. Yeah. Over the next couple months and they're going to stay in here. Yeah. So got to get it done. Let's do it. High quality tools we got here at uh, Komarebi. That's where it's great because it fits right in between the joints here where the pieces connect. And by the end, it's to be like a mushroom to tip. So honestly, from here, it's gonna be doable, but like the back and the side here, it's gonna be real tall. Like, 
Hello. Hello. I'm trying to get the money for this. The Balance King and what are you doing there? Scraping it down. How's that window? Good. I can't wait to put the front windows on because that's really pretty. And the loft. I'm excited for it all. <laughs> it's going to put you as high as the dome on the uh, yurt there. Yeah. With neighbors right next door. And then I promise I'll get on the roofing for everything. I'll mail all the roofing together. Oh. So everything's finished. Oh, I'm just fine. Yeah, what do you think? Cool. Okay, which uh, should it be male in or female in to start? Um, I think we would snap the male into the female. Okay. <laughs> okay. And that's how nature intended it as well. Like, is there any benefit to me not doing it that way? Like, I'm just putting it in the end. But you took my walking boards out of here. Yeah, I did. Alright. Yeah, that's right. It's not uh. Get up in. Take your shoes off before you get into my baby nursery slash studio. <laughs> the dogs want to come in so no. badly. There's no Don't way. Do it, bro. There's no way. This view is gonna be great. Let me show the people out there what we're looking at here. Hold on. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. Stay. Ooh. What about like the ability to look out over the property? It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's really nice. And you're on ground floor. You're gonna be up in a loft. The loft has windows too, right? Uh, one window, yeah. Yeah. Well, a window in the back and then in the front. This is good bear watching cabin right here. You just sit up here yeah. with a camera <laughs> and watch for bears. Yeah. Cougar. Okay, let's keep going. I was gonna help you down, but. Oh. <laughs> Step on my shoes. Hey, one thing over this uh, off-grid adventure is your screwing technique. What do you think about it? It's improved. Let's see. That was pretty sexy.
this the second day in a row without rain. Are we going to finish this and put the roof on before the rain come on Monday? Yeah. You think? For sure. It's a race.